Uh, friends, uh, very happy evening to all of you. I welcome you all to an uh, important meeting on uh, IBC. In fact, when me and FT member were discussing, uh, the discussion was whether we should still have an IBC meeting given the relaxations what the government is giving. But we thought, nevertheless, the rules are not going to change much. So we thought we'll definitely have a meeting. And uh, the immediate name which came to us was C. Anil Goyal, sir, who is kind of authority on the subject. And uh, thanks to the initiative of the FT ma'am, that we are able to kind of have him amidst us, where he's going to share his uh, thoughts on IBC. A lot of things have changed, are changing, and a lot of relaxations are also come. So we'll request the speaker also to touch up on that. So uh, I request all the members to take benefit of his presence. And you can always put your chat, uh, the questions in the question box, which you will take up in the end. And the handout, the material which we put up shortly in the handouts, which also can be downloaded. Nevertheless, this also will be put in the SRT website. Now we request uh, the RFT ma'am first to share her thoughts. Then we'll request Abhishek Murli to introduce the speaker. RFT ma'am, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, DC. Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, good evening, Anil, sir. And uh, good evening, Abhishek. Uh, I should first place on my record uh, appreciation for Anil, sir, for immediately accepting when I um, requested him, even though these are the lockdown times. I don't think he is facing any kind of lockdown uh, uh, phenomena or any kind of inactivity due to lockdown. He seems to be extremely busy and he tells me, you call me at this time. Only then will I be able to answer you and then finally i have to resort to whatsapp it's so great that you were able to accept our invitation sir thank you very very much uh see actually if you see the uh, one side of the covid pandemic the lockdown the other side is the economic economic impact which we are facing on all areas and ibc has been one of the most talked about uh, economic uh, impacts or measures or you know uh, suspending IBC for uh, six months to one year and then increasing the default uh, limit and uh, now introduction of section 10a. So there has been a lot of, uh, if you see a lot of articles, a lot of discussions on uh, as to whether, you know, the IBC is a failure, whether IBC is going, what is going to IBC going forward? How are the, you know, NPAs going to be resolved? How are the MSMEs going to recover from their uh, corporates uh, you know, and there is there are so many ramifications for this one particular thing of uh, suspension uh, are you able to hear me are you able to hear me yeah okay so this uh, i think anil sir is not uh, okay so uh, go, taking this forward, uh, what we felt was IBL, you know, having a meeting on IBC is going to be extremely relevant now because in one way or the other, if you see the economic impact of IBC is very, very high. And if you see the ease of doing business, World Bank's ease of doing business index uh, implementation, the success of implementation of IBC and the recoveries which have been shown by India has been one one of the main factors for India actually, uh, you know, rising up in the rankings up to 63. So there is no way that IBC is going to be suspended fully. What is going to be suspended is taking action on uh, defaults due to COVID. And I think that, you know, as uh, professionals, we all know it is very easy for us to identify why a default has happened and how a default has happened uh, due to COVID. And this is the only one which is not within the the ambit of IBC and uh, we have Anil sir who is going to take us through the entire gamut of how IBC is going to look post-COVID, post the lockdown and post the lifting of the suspension. And uh, what I feel is that as professionals, we all need to upskill ourselves even more to take on the uh, volume of activities which are going to come subsequent to the lifting. And also, you know, once they notify the individuals and partnerships, which is also going to happen because uh, suspending is what is happening world over. But once it is lifted world over, Everyone is going to go in a coordinated effort, and that is how the economies of the entire world is also going to improve. And we all know that once the lockdown is lifted, 
economically india is going to thrive it may be a few months six months to one year our economy may be a on a little shaky footing but you know we have always had a history of bouncing back and we will definitely bounce back and insolvency is also go also going to play a major role in this uh, economic up uh, upturn i would say of uh, of india so over to abhishek now for a formal introduction of anil sir and then on to discussion the ipc discussion thank you Uh, chairman you are on mute we cannot hear you uh, in fact thanks to ca revati ma'am she is our ipc ma'am coincidentally she is a woman who kinds of uh, you know is very uh, uh, eager about anything to do on ipc she is the chairman of the ipc and the valuation committee also so rightfully she is doing programs in fact she wanted to refresh her course if things uh, go fine we'll do a refresh her course also on ipc so thank you so much ma'am for bringing us to anil goel and uh, discuss on things and for the benefit of members though there are relax relaxations they are only temporary it is going to go bigger because ibc is going to get applicable to the individuals and partnership firms also going forward which also we would like to uh, see anil goel to discuss abhishek over to you to introduce our speaker yeah, thank you thank you so much chairman uh, thank you revati ma'am uh, for that opening address and of course uh, thank you so much anil goel ji for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us i am very privileged to give you uh, you have the honor of introducing uh, anil goel ji you know when we conceptualized the program uh, some people had asked the chairman and i why ibc uh, anyway they have pushed it by one year no why ibc we told that this is continuing professional education you know whether ibc is happening now or not one year later all of what cases should have happened this one year will happen then so it's more important for us to be prepared for that time take this as an opportunity to gear up and learn more and make use of the opportunity that comes out of ibc so i now formally introduce our speaker ca anil goel ji he is the founder and chairman of aaa insolvency professionals llp one of the first two insolvency professional entities which was recognized by the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india he is a member of the advisory committee of the ipa of icai he is the co-chairman of the asochem national council for insolvency and bankruptcy and he is also a member of the working group established by the ibbi for the implementation of individual bankruptcy in india he is also a member of the sebi constituted by the ibbi a faculty for awareness program launched at the instance of cbdt and the ibbi authorities and a faculty for spreading awareness amongst the drt members and the officials on the insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings of personal guarantors he is a regular faculty at the iica and uh, he is a regular speaker at various forums also professional forums webinars uh, even valuation management of stressed assets under surface and restructuring of debts etc along with the uh, insolvency is a regular speaker at workshops organized by ibpi ipas icai icsi icma asochem cia the list goes on endlessly he is a regular contributor of articles of professional interest as well and uh, he is a person with significant professional experience also in fact uh, he acted uh, he is currently acting as a liquidator in 10 uh, companies some of the most uh, well known companies the list is there on the page you can see uh, rei agro limited rotomac lml limited amrapali group lanco etc and uh, as i already said founder of the aaa insolvency professionals llp the largest insolvency professional in the country and uh, he is also the founder and chairman of aaa capital services private limited a company engaged in the profession of resolution or enforcement agents under surface act and it operates in more than 20 states in our country uh, see anil goel is also a chartered accountant in practice senior partner of a firm and has engaged in raising funds structuring restructuring rehabilitation and handled more than 1000 cases so this is only a brief introduction because even though i was reading the profile shared with me given the uh, lack of time i had to skip that also and despite that we have covered so many achievements by anil goel ji so thank you so much anil goel ji for joining us today and taking time out of your busy schedule to address the members of our southern region uh, i take great honor in welcoming you sir when you are in mute you are in mute Yeah, 
सर यू नॉट ऑडिबल अनिल सर ऑडिबल इट इज नॉट ऑडिबल नाउ इट इज बैक नाउ इट इज आई थिंक इट इज बैक नाउ इट इज बैक नाउ सो थैंक यू वेरी मच Uh, for uh, all these uh, words that you have spoken to me, and uh, my first and foremost thanks to C. A. Rivathi, and she has been interacting with me, and she was also kind enough to speak to me as per my time availability. My special thanks to Mr. D. C. Jain, uh, Chairman S. I. R. C. of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, C. A. Abhishek Murali, Secretary of uh, S. I. R. C. of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, which is my own institute, and uh, it definitely would be a wonderful experience to address the audience, which is from uh, South India. We have our offices in Chennai, Bangalore, uh, and, and most of the uh, Hyderabad and Kochi. So the most of the South India that we have already covered, our partners are working there, and the business opportunities are. Uh, huge uh i definitely think that this time is a very very good time for ibc subject uh, why i am saying so because uh, in the news uh, only half cooked items are being presented so first of all i would like to clear that there is no suspension of ibc there is no suspension of ibc and the professional opportunities the opportunities for creditors have not gone down anywhere i will just come because see my slide in fact it uh, had a lot of uh, impact of covid on businesses and all that while i was hearing you that the uh, ibc has been suspended that maybe that the ibc is not at all a relevant subject now immediately i shifted the two slides from my presentation to clarify this doubt first of all that the ibc has not been suspended and most of the uh, participants would be happy to see whosoever are actually ever engaged in uh, ibc as a resolution professional as a liquidator as an authorized representative and most of the chartered accountants who are hand holding the corporate debtors under financial stress most of the chartered accountants are also engaged in preparation of resolution plans they are hand holding uh, the resolution applicants and they are also engaged in the forensic audit transaction audit so every for everyone uh, the business would not even go down by 10% not even by 10% and coming down to that i am actually explaining each and every and i would i would rather prefer rather than speaking for continuously for one and a half hour or two hours i would prefer that we will take questions every 30 minutes so that the relevant question are taken up at relevant time so any of uh, you can read the questions to me from the panel and then i would be able to answer every 30 minutes so that actually would be uh, engaging the audience or even you can actually give the mic also to the people who are raising hands that also can be given so that everyone participate into the discussion so with this i think let me share my screen with you and uh, Uh, just one moment i will just uh, share my screen with you so is it visible to all yes it is visible now sir yeah so uh the subject as we chose everyone knows and uh, the first is ibc so let me first of all explain ibc what it stands how it stands where it stands today and then we will discuss the financial stresses uh, which are uh, because of the covid-19 or pandemic so it is very very important that we should understand what is the ordinance the ordinance dated 5th of june 2020 is a is a very very a specific ordinance which says that the uh, the ibc is suspended uh, for every default which has occurred or arising on or after 25th of march 
for a period of six months, but not exceeding one year from the from such date. So this is the ordinance that maybe for six months or maybe one year, and depending upon the central government and all applications like under section 7 9 and 10 is suspended and the ibc would not be applicable second it says that the no application also would be filed and in the explanation it is said that the default uh, uh, the explanation and ibc whatever it is submitted it says the it shall not be applicable to any default committed before 25th of march 2020 so let us understand that presently the banks are sitting on various uh, NPAs, maybe more than 8 lakh crores. And out of those 8 lakh crores, maybe there are some which belong, which, but, which pertains to entities like uh, proprietorship concerns or partnership firms or societies where the IBC is not yet applicable. But all other loans which are not given to entities, as I spoke, and which are given to uh, the corporate entities, LLPs, or any other incorporated entity, like there are some societies which are incorporated, so even the IBC is applicable on those are incorporated entities also. So let us assume that out of 8 lakh crores, 50% of the uh, NPAs are still pertaining to corporate entities, LLPs, or even the incorporated uh, other entities like some of the societies. So then the entire existing NPAs are applicable and the, this particular ordinance is not applicable to all those defaults. Definitely the NPA, if, it, if an account is NPA, that means at least the account is NPA uh, because of a default for 90 days. And that default definitely would have been much before 25th of March, 2020. So the banks, NBFCs, financial creditors, operational creditors, workmen, everyone would be able to file an application to NCLT for any default which occurred or arise before 25th March 2020. So which is very, very important to understand what is presently suspended. Only defaults which are occurring after 25th of March 2020 only those defaults are suspended. Those defaults, otherwise also, in case there is any default which is as recent as 25th of March 2020, do you think that the banks definitely would have been preparing for filing the NCLT application? Banks normally come up to NCLT only maybe after a year or maybe even many years, but not less than at least the account becomes NPA. And we are not even talking about NPA, we are talking about default. The definition of default under IBC is not NPA. It is the date on which any installment or interest was due and is not paid. So that is the only default date. Default date is very, very important actually to see and show that it is prior to 25th of March 2020. So whatever existing business which was expected by the insolvency professionals or anyone who was engaged in the insolvency law, nothing has been dropped. All that business which was expected in the next two years, that is continuing. Anything that was expected, something, because it, today in case there is a default, that particular default will uh, convert into an application after six months or after one year or after many years. So what are we talking about? That means whatever the business that we expected in the next two, three years, that will definitely come. And all those defaults, which has occurred during this period from 25th of March 2020 and till 25th of March or 24th of March 2021. During this period, if there would be any default, that would be handled separately by way of a uh, by way of uh, maybe RBI circular under uh, dated 7th June 2020, uh, so two, uh, 2019, or maybe any other uh, uh, bailout package which the government come out. Uh, the new scheme, uh, which is uh... Uh, so your voice is not audible. I 
Anil sir, your voice is not audible. It is more than 2,000 crores. So we are trying to bring it down the uh, ultimate uh, uh, amount of the 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 threshold amount of 2,000 crore actually can be brought down by RBI. So this is uh, uh, this see, like any uh, person who have supplied goods or services, and the payment was due before 25th of March 2020, and the payment was not made. All those creditors can go to NCLT. The only thing is that the threshold limit of one lakh has been increased to one crore. So that is uh, that that might impact more than the impact of this ordinance because the threshold limit of one crore now that will take away a lot many applications which were being filed by operational creditors for the recovery so that has been taken away uh, and maybe that will come again but that has been taken away so that amendment of increase in the threshold limit actually would impact on the ibc more than the ordinance the ordinance would not impact the actual profession of ibc so this is the uh, the the even uh, I would say where the demand notice were already issued for any operational creditor. If the demand notice were already issued, or even if the demand notice are not issued, but the date of default is before 25th of March 2020, those applications will also be filed. So nothing has actually been diminished. No business has been taken away by this ordinance. To my understanding. Uh, zero business has been taken away by this ordinance rather the business which otherwise would have come to us after a year that might get a little slower uh, only because any default between 25th of march 2020 to 24th of march 2021 for that default ibc would not be available but maybe there are many other restructuring schemes or comp uh, uh, those would be available uh, for any uh, Kind of relief to the industry or for saving the employment in the country so the uh, the the important part is that the even it is very clearly said that the application also would not be filed or it application would not be even filed if the default is post 25th of march 2020 so that means that the registrar will have some kind of power that the registrar will first of all see the date of default and if the date of default is post 25th march 2020 then that application would not be admitted so this clause is introduced only to uh, only to avoid clogging of uh, nclt benches where a lot of people will go and get the try to get the adjudication whether the default is prior to 25th march or post 25th march so most every default whosoever was preparing for ibc definitely is prior to 25th march 2020 where this law is applicable so my uh, understanding the uh, uh, mr jan is i think we should open the discussion at this level because unless we settle this issue it is very difficult to go forward and try to see the impact of uh, pandemic on the economy or effect of the uh, how to resolve that so we have prepared uh, in such a manner that it is usable because I am not sure whether the participants are uh, those only who are interested in IBC or or or, a, or, or any uh, professional colleague who is uh, engaged in financial services, auditing, accounting. So this is the time when we should actually clarify every question on this IBC ordinance. Then the perspective of uh, further slides would be better understood. If there is any question so far, or we can even uh, give uh, a mic to people who have raised hands. Sir, actually, there are no questions uh, as of now. Okay. Uh, people have, uh, I think everyone's uh, listening uh, very seriously to you. Maybe as we go on, as the questions come up, we'll start taking them. Okay. okay. Because we just started. So, Most uh, of them so are chatted. This... All right. Okay. Yeah. So, this is this is a clarification on ibc ibc is genuinely there and there is nothing which has happened as a suspension so that is not to be understood like that i hope my uh, uh my slide is still visible because i took it off and now it is still visible is it visible yeah yeah it is visible sir so uh and now we can see like uh, the pandemic impact on the economy and uh, 
um, not a very specific but it is a general uh, understanding of uh, all my professional colleagues uh, uh, that we would like to highlight in this slide so the a general uh, impact on the economy is directly affecting the production uh, supply and consumption so if the three things are impacted uh, production is uh, closed supply is closed or consumption is closed to the extent of say 80 percent so that will definitely impact the economy the supply chain was disrupted markets were disrupted so the major impact was on some of the industries like hospitality travel real estate automobile entertainment even till today the entertainment industry has not opened the hospitality industry has not opened the travel is not opened real estate also like globally is neither the construction is going on nor the customers are coming so there was a month when even not even a single car was sold uh, in india the employment is also uh, not certain uh, there is a possibility that people might even get terminated during this period uh, the there is a decline in the business in the service sector because see like as a chartered accountant also we see that the people are not ready to get their auditing done so this period even if we were ready as as a triple a group we was com we were completely ready to work from home all over our all our employees were working from home and they were all having uh, connected on the net and all kind of facilities were given to them so that they can do uh, uh, remotely uh, everything whatever is required to do in the financial services sector shortage of workmen uh, would actually be a very very big reason because of the uh, problem of uh, uh, like people move back to their hometown because problem of migrant uh, workmen and the problem uh, uh, is this problem is more specific to india because the india's demographic is that the people move from villages to cities or other places for job so this all is having an impact on the uh, financial impact on the uh, businesses now i have categorized the financial impact on the business entities more specific to msme then we will try to find out the options what are the options available with them uh, so the financial impact on the business entities would be like losses during the lockdown period because of all the above reasons as we said in the last slide and expenses with no business and loss of value of stocks also there are many people they have actually lost value of their stocks and their expenditures are more than income income in some cases is zero but expenditures cannot be zero uh, there is a disruption of fund flow because the customers are not releasing their payments i even know the examples where the uh, mostly the oems uh, they are not releasing payments for their uh, manufacturer for their uh, vendors uh, the continued loss for loss for some more time because of the continuation of uh, pandemic that will also add losses uh, working capital positive is being felt because the revenues are not coming the expenditures are being incurred the salaries are being paid expenditure for the revival of the business would be retired because required because the restart of the business is uh, definitely has a cost in many businesses that cost is significant the debtors are not uh, making payment uh, because uh, like this particular period the default would not be considered as a default so everyone would like to take this advantage because after 25th of march 2020 the uh, default uh, uh, would not be uh, considered as a default and the uh, the supplier would not be able to take the customer to nb uh, to to nclt so that is one scenario which actually would add to the fund flows uh, of a of a company so default in payment uh, of first payment to suppliers workmen taxes unsecured so all these defaults will happen by msme or even larger companies now let us understand the options available or uh, remedies available with msme to resolve financial stress so first of all because most of the chartered accountant they their their clients may be asking what to do so this is uh, will
in case they are bullish about the business and revival and uh, this is also uh, called a, a shock absorbing capacity every businessman must have a shock absorbing capacity because this is a shock and everyone should prepare for shock absorbing capacity so in case anyone has better capacity would survive anyone who is not having the shock uh, the shock absorbing capacity would go deep into the trouble the restructuring of the business can be done aligned realigned with the expenditure change in the product mix based on the market dynamics settle with the creditors and share some of the losses with them so this part i would like to explain i would like to explain in the manner that i would start one that this pandemic is a natural calamity it can also be called as act of god so with the such kind of uh, natural calamities or act of god there is no society or there is no economy in the world which would say that in this period one segment would totally be ruined and the other segment would get some undue enrichment so what i'm trying to say is that everyone in the society is ready to suffer some of the losses and they are ready to cooperate wherever they are trying to cooperate so in case we start we start with the employer and employee relationship and practically we have seen that the employers are also suffering because of no business and the employees are also suffering some are suffering because the employers are not having any money to pay and some are suffering because the employers have said that during this period we would not be able to pay full salaries we would pay lesser salaries as uh, you might have seen even the supreme court has uh, held and supreme court has given notice to central government that how can it be possible that uh, how can you direct the employers that the salaries and wages during lockdown would be paid so it has to be it has to be settled between the employees and employer and to my practical experience handling so many uh, clients every employee is ready and every employer is ready every employer is ready to pay some amount and the employee is also ready to take the amount whatever is being offered but the employee is also worried about the continuation of the job so in this scenario uh what i'm trying to say is that the every businessman every entrepreneur should not try to take the loss on him complete loss should not be taken uh, so this was an employee employer relationship then coming to the relationship of uh, the uh, landlord and tenant the although the supreme court has said that the force majeure clause is may not be applicable but let us understand in case the landlord is not getting the payment for 2 months for the rent or getting the payment at 50% let us understand what are the options available with the landlord so let us assume that the offices or the shops everything opens up after 3 months time and after 3 months the tenant starts giving the rent the tenant starts giving the rent and but says that it is for the month of july so for 3 months which is uh, april may and june so what are the options available with the landlord the landlord will definitely say that you are not paying my rent for these 3 months because you are occupying the premises that the landlord will only go to court rent control courts or any other control whoever is an adjudicating authority for such matters the court will say that you have to settle because there is nothing the court can say and it will take 2 years and finally it has to be settled between the landlord and the tenant so the court would not be able to pass an order why we see like it is a force majeure and whether it is a force majeure or not that orders will take lot much of time and lot many landlords and tenants will settle by that time then comes is the <clears throat> suppliers uh, and customers so for every year in case you are still getting the value of the goods you, you should pay and the delay in making payment is acceptable and delay in getting payment is acceptable so any periodic payment so like for example we are making payment of uh, any every every month we are making some payment for some uh, use of generator or some use of uh, other services all these periodic payments also in case services are not availed services are not provided then those payments also can be settled with those service providers so while i'm saying so 
I'm saying the best option for an entrepreneur, for a businessman is to settle with everyone and continue the business, reduce the losses. Of course, there will be some losses, but reduce the losses, let the burden of losses go to all the stakeholders, and then try to revive the businesses. And the impact of COVID-19 can be neutralized by all these actions that I'm saying you. And I will come to the legal part also because that will be uh, the next part of my slides. <clears throat> As the government is offering uh, some kind of relief, some kind of uh, like the government is offering some EPF relief or uh, the Employees Provident Fund, the government is also offering some uh, the emergency credit line that also can be uh, used. Uh, then uh, the, since this uh, because of this insolvency, there is no option of going to insolvency for defaults uh, after 25th of March, so that would not be applicable. So the, however, the personal guarantee, I mean, that option would be, of course, available. So in case a person feels that I'm not able to come out of this stress, uh, of, we have seen that the section 10 also is, uh, section 10 also is suspended for the defaults after 25th of uh, March. So we are not talking about anything after 25th of March. We are only talking something, IBC is only for a default, which is before 25th of March, 2020. Now let us see the, options or remedies available with MSME against defaulters. Uh, now the, I'm coming to the uh, other side of the table. Uh, now I'm an MSME and I have a defaulter, many defaulter. So how to handle that part? So as an MSME, as an entrepreneur, I would try to settle with the defaulters for continued business and share the losses. And if there are some checks in hand, and that I would like to use because the checks in hand is still usable. And there is nothing like, uh, uh, there is nothing like which uh, is uh, uh, suspended as far as section 138 is concerned, it is not suspended. So there are some cases where the, when, when you are a, a single uh, uh, source for supply, then you can disrupt the supply and take the entire money. And that also can be used as a tool to get your money back from the customer. You can also use the chapter five of the uh, micro, small and medium enterprises development act. Uh, if the other party is uh, uh, not MSME. In this uh, MSME scenario, uh, there is a uh, kind of uh, MSME, uh, facilitation council which is made it, this council try to uh, make some kind of uh, uh, compromises between the supplier and because, because between the defaulters so this also can be used for recovering your money and the ibc of course cannot be used so this is only the uh, when i am businessman i actually have to settle with everyone options or remedies available with the suppliers workmen or employees because I'm trying to handle it from the every side. Now let us understand what are the options available with the uh, employers, employees. Employees will also have to share the loss or otherwise uh, they can go to a forum uh, where the somebody can say that why are you not paying salaries? And the, the businessman can always say that I'm not having funds. So if the government can arrange funds, I will pay. But the government is not making any arrangement of the funds. So the, and the Supreme Court has also held that no coercive action would be taken if a person is not making payment of salaries. That has also been held by the Supreme Court. So as, see, as against the uh, suppliers, workmen, they should also settle because they also have no other option. The supplier also should uh, settle, the employee also should settle, the workmen also should settle and try to handle the pandemic situation in a collaborative manner and it should not be considered that it is Anil sir we have lost your audio Anil sir uh, Anil sir, 
are you able to listen to us we have lost your audio the large yeah. scale enterprise yeah no your audio listen we lost your audio for a, a few seconds sir okay 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 so i think the the subject that i'm trying to handle as of now is what are the options available with the uh, business man now i am coming to the uh, options available with the banks and financial institution this particular slide uh, is uh, only handling the banks and financial institutions or secured creditors since the default is uh, to to my understanding if there is a default after 25th of march 2020 so the banks definitely have no option to go to ibc even i uh, know that there is a order by a high court that during this uh, lockdown even the surface actions would not be taken so the uh, dm or cmm they are not giving orders during this period for for uh, for taking possession of the properties or secured assets and handing it over to banks that is also suspended for some time by the uh, because the timing is not there but then during lockdown it will, it will not happen then the other option with the banks is that the only restructure reschedule settle the terms and uh, in case the bank feels that yes uh, this company can uh, definitely uh, it is a short term scenario so the bank can further extend some facilities so all this has to be done uh, with within the extending uh, period as announced by the rbi for npa classification originally it was announced for 3 months now it is announced for 6 months for 6 month default starting from 25th of march uh, the account would not be considered as npa because this iras norms by rbi has been uh, amended and this period is excluded and now this period is extended to 6 months even if there is a default for 6 months the account would not be declared as npa so that's a bigger relief Uh, so yes we might even think that there will be people who would be uh, intentionally defaulting during this period but somehow whenever you default you end up paying penal interest you also end up paying interest so if somebody is not bothered about interest and then of course he can continue the credit facilities for another 6 months and pay interest on that so if the bank can take action against surface once this lockdown is over the bank definitely can take action under surface but yes i am sure about that the department of financial services or any of uh, the court uh, would come out uh, with the, any order which will also prohibit the banks and financial institution to invoke section 132 or 134 of the surface act and the properties also would not be taken in possession by the secured creditors that also will come because it is not possible that the only the uh, ibc uh, only the protection is from ibc the protection would be from all sides to businessman uh, for this pandemic period ibc cannot be invoked the bank can also invoke personal guarantees but that also because see, in case the bank invokes personal guarantees in during this period along with the collateral security that they'll have to do under surface so i'm sure something will come for under surface so so let us conclude that the secured creditor uh, would also not have any option after 25th of march 2020 default so they would only have an option to extend further facilities also to settle with them reschedule restructure that is the only option available with the banks now let us understand the what all has been done by the government for uh, and the what all the relaxations the relaxations has been given by the government uh, for to the businessman uh, the first is nclt uh, order dated 30th of march 2020 uh, which it was a suomoto order and which uh, said that the period of lockdown would be excluded from cirp period as specified under section 12 of ibc so this period from 25th of march 2020 onwards till the time the lockdown is continuing maybe it it will continue for 3 months so that period would be excluded from ibc and it will be considered as automatically extended any stay order or interim order passed by the nclt shall continue till next date of hearing so there is everything is stand still during this period uh, during lockdown period so there no no adverse impact on any legal uh, 
uh, proceedings before NCLT or any other authority under IBC. Even the Supreme Court has passed a suomoto order that all the limitation period prescribed under any law shall be extended from 15th March 2020 to the date of further order passed by Supreme Court. So many limitations in any limitation everything is now extended and that is started from 15th of March 2020. So may it be income tax anything which where the limitations are there and that limitation would not be having any adverse impact. The threshold limit of uh, IBC has been increased from 1 lakh to 1 crore dated 24th of March 2020. Suspension, of course, we have discussed. Uh, the default, of course, would be 25th of March 2020. Uh, there is a possibility of uh, another uh, resolution framework which is expected for MSME, and that is expected under Section 240A of the Code. Uh, it is being worked out and uh, definitely it will be introduced. On the other hand, now, even if for the existing cases where the IBC is continuing and uh, the company was not MSME earlier, but now with the fact on 13th of May 2020, the notification has already been issued and the limits under MSME has been increased. Now, the highest limit is 50 crores of investment in plant and machinery and turnover of 250 crores. So, with this definition of MSME, so most of the companies, even under NCLT, those would be covered under MSME and those companies can even register. Even the RP can register them now as MSME once this government website is started functioning uh, as according to the new uh, limitations the MSME registrations can be done. Once the MSME registration is done, then the promoters can also submit the resolution plan and that section 29A of the IBC would not be applicable. So this is also uh, a, a, a one of the very, very important relaxation that has been given by government that in case the resolution applicants are not available in the market, so most of the companies where even the turnover, you see when we talk about turnover, it is not talking about the peak turnover. It is talking about the turnover in the last year. So in case the last year the company was already sick, it was bad. So the turnover, in fact, even if the turnover peak turnover was 600 crores, while the company is not doing well, the turnover will definitely reduce to a great extent. So in all these cases, uh, the turnover will definitely uh, come within this new limitation, new limits, and a company would be considered as a, uh, as a MSME, and the promoters will be able to submit a resolution plan because the promoters understand smaller companies better than anyone else. So this is also a very big relaxation that the uh, this has been increased, the limits have been increased. Various other compliance defaults like the uh, IRAC, like income recognition and asset classification norms has been uh, uh, relaxed. As earlier it was for, uh, earlier it was only for three months, now it has been extended for six months. Income tax and GST compliance dates and payment of taxes has been relaxed. Ministry of Corporate Affairs, ROC relaxations has been announced. SEBI relaxations has also been announced. Other relaxations would also be offered from different industry segments and that in case there is uh, uh, no, no, nothing is coming, then I think appropriate uh, forums can be uh, taken up, the matter can be taken up there and the, it can be discussed. Now the uh, IBC now and the future. I think, sir, can we take some questions? Uh, I think it's an appropriate time that we should take on questions. Yeah, uh, uh, I request the admin to uh, put me as a presenter so that I'll share my screen. Yeah, I'll just share my screen. Sir. Is the questions visible on the screen? It is visible. Okay, uh, the first question is, my question is that if I'm, I'll take it. Sir. My question is that if application under section 7, 9 or 10 is admitted, then as on date, the valuations will be required to be done. The date of default, the date of admission of my petition or any other date. As I understand, the valuation is on date of petition. 
सीए नीतीश ब्रोवर नो सी लाइक द फर्स्ट अनिल सर वी हैव वी हैव लॉस्ट योर ऑडियो अनिल सर अनिल सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल अनिल सर नगोल जी वी कैनॉट हियर यू अनिल सर अनिल सर सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर सर वी मिस्ड योर ऑडियो अगेन चेयरमैन शो हिम अ हैंड अनिल सर माय हैंड विल बी ऑडिबल अनिल सर sir we missed your audio hello okay. we lost so, your audio I, sir yeah you will have to so restart would, again uh, lost your audio i would i sir. would repeat i would repeat so the Thank first you. part of the uh, the first, first part of the question is the uh, application under section 7 9 or 10 is admitted now the admission means that the cirp has started once the cirp is started i hope i am audible yes sir yes sir audible sir Yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, so once the once the CIRP is started, uh, at uh, the the like, the valuer has to be appointed by the RP. Uh, if the RP is not getting appointed uh, within first forty days, then the RP would be considered as doing the duties of the RP on the fortieth day of CIRP. So there are two dates: one, a seventh day of the appointment of RP, or Forty seventh day from the date of commencement of CIRP, that is the date when the uh, valuer would be appointed. Yes, so second, there is nothing is... like the valuation as on the date of petition. The valuation has to be on the date of order of uh, initiating CIRP. The valuation has to be done on the date of the order of the CIRP. question number 2 due government announcement most of the businesses entities even reported are not paying rent for the lockdown period is it valid as per law whether a owner owners get any concession in property tax only krishna prasad so this is a typical question that i also handled that the most of the tenants are not paying rent uh, whereas the supreme court has handled this matter twice at one point of time the supreme court handled this because this lawyer lawyers who were actually occupying the uh, uh, the chambers the lawyers submitted an application to high court of delhi that they should not be allowed they should not be paying rent for this period because they are not using it the high court uh, refused uh, in this manner there was another application for tenant and uh, this thing but then the supreme court for the time being has uh, held that this this particular part is not covered as a post majeure however the if the rent is not being paid no coercive action should be taken during this period or it can be paid later but my understanding how i explained to you is that in case you don't pay the rent for the 3 months or you settle with the landlord for a lesser rent and later on you start paying your rent as per the agreement then the landlord has only an option to go to court and uh, ask for the rent because he cannot ask for eviction because you are paying the rent for june july august and then he can only ask for the balance rent let us let's see what the court says and finally after 2 years the court will say okay settle yourself so it is always better to settle and take the life forward rather than going for litigation yeah. next question is uh, most of the banks are giving loans are for trade under msme is it permissible most of the banks are giving loans even for trade under msme so the uh, see the, the msme is primarily for manufacturing or for providing services uh, for trading activities are not considered as msme it is only for manufacturing or for service sectors if they somebody is providing services so maybe somebody is trying to say that i am providing some services and also selling some goods while i am providing some services that may be covered because see primarily it is servicing but as simple trading activities are not covered as msm this is not permitted the next question is india is facing financial stress even before lockdown multiple measures are announced by government and rbi however there is no sufficient measures to boost the demand side banks are not willing or hesitant to lend to the businesses to restart operations due to due to raising nps 
and consequences of moratorium scheme for six can we expect some measures in this time from government or rbi ca vishnu uh, so i think this lockdown has taught us a lot many things no us means the entire society in india uh, the everyone has realized that there are lot many things that we use in life which are not even required and the life is still comfortable without using some of the luxurious items that we consumed in the past so this scenario definitely will lead to lower demand for some time and if the demand is lower the size of the economy would actually be lower and for increasing demand like let us see what the uh, developed countries are doing because they can print as many notes as possible because they have uh, they don't have that kind of fiscal deficit and they don't have that kind of uh, uh, inflation difficulties in india if the government tries to print note and hand over some purchasing power to each and every person then that would lead to that would lead to inflation and that would lead to a very huge uh, fiscal deficit so that probably is not something that the economist will suggest indian government the government uh, will not come uh, anything which is a blanket uh, uh, spreading money in the market for developing a demand for increasing demand yes the government can spend with the ac on infrastructure the government will definitely come up uh, with the banks the as the and uh, banks have been given this 3 lakhs crore to be given to the msme i am coming to that scheme and that scheme is a very good scheme that anyone can take 20% of the loan the order he has taken and that is fully granted by that is fully fully granted by central government fully granted means that if the bank is losing any money on that account that would be uh, supported by central government it's a budgetary support which will come so uh, this this is a uh, definitely a, a difficult question and uh, this is a right uh, observation that the demand will be reduced for some time and this demand uh, increase in the demand uh, like see we have an example of about 40 years back uh, canada in fact uh, uh, when there was a huge uh, downside in the economy the canada printed notes and uh, started investing on huge infrastructure so they made roads even on those on on those routes where there was only uh, uh, only two cars which was supposed to go so they made roads there also so that was the infrastructure created uh, and the money was even if the uh, the government can do that or the government can create an environment that international investment should come in india so that is also a very big possibility that the international investment should come in india and india is that is the reason that the ibc would never be suspended ibc one of a very very big condition for ease of doing uh, uh, doing business index and that is that would never be disturbed because the ease of doing business insolvency and bankruptcy and gst both have added a lot of uh, points and india will never lose uh, the points ibc will continue and the ease of doing business index would improve then we expect that some people will come in india and invest money after this uh, fear of uh, uh, corona is over you can share your screen is it visible yeah visible sir yes so I, as i said that the uh, resolution applicant would not be available for some time and uh, since this uh, definition for msme has increased so many companies which are already under insolvency the promoters will become eligible now because the rp will apply for msme status promoters will become eligible to participate and that will be a new life uh, for the company and as for the promoters also so for most of the existing cases the rp should apply for msme uh, certificate based on the facts and then the promoters can also participate into the resolution plan in case they wish to do that anil sir anil sir we have lost your audio again anil sir sir 
Anil sir, we have lost your audio again. Uh, Anil sir, company to the same promoter uh, at a discounted price. Anil sir, thirty seconds of audio we lost again, sir. Please. <laughs> okay. So uh, the resolution applicant is not available and would not be available for some time. This is a difficulty that presently India is facing for an insolvency law. But a very big uh, uh, relaxation has come when the definition of MSME has been modified and the many companies which are under insolvency would come under the definition of MSME. Where the plant and machinery is uh, 50 crores or less and the turnover is less than 250 crores. And that, that too, not the peak turnover, but that's a turnover which is considered to be the turnover in the last year. So, so see what I'm trying to say is that the, the promoters would be able to participate into the resolution plan. And the promoters would be able to take away the company again. However, the COC is not comfortable in handing over the company to the promoters in case there is any fraudulent transaction which is found by the transactional auditor. The COC says that uh, one side that we are trusting the same promoter who have already done fraud and that promoter is taking the company by giving us 60% or 70% loss, that is not, uh, the COC is not comfortable because they feel that this is not the right thing and we will not promote this in the, in the country. Otherwise, every promoter will actually do this uh, willful default and come and take the company back to bet at 50% or 40%. So that is not acceptable to COC. However, in case the promoter in association with some other investor give everything to the COC upfront, then the COC is accepting. Then the COC is saying that now the other promoter, some other investor has come and the promoter is reduced to something like 20%, 30%, 40% shares that can be accepted however if the promoter says that they give the company back to me i will earn i will pay in five years that kind of preservation plans are not being accepted fresh investment would come in india and uh, see that that should be uh, fresh investment would be kept on in hold that's also everyone knows that in india the investments would be kept on hold anyone who is Is having cash would be sitting on the cash that's of course uh, 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 very important that once the market is very low every cash valuation would decline further so there are many people they have already submitted their resolution plans and now they are trying to renegotiate with the committee of creditors and they are saying that the valuations have come down this business has already ruined and this business will not revive in the next less than one year or two years so they are seeking a lot of discount or they are even ready to forego their earnest money deposit what i understand is that in case somebody will go for litigation even the nclt will say that this situation has changed and this person should be entitled to get the earnest money back so if anyone suppose somebody has submitted a application for a hotel or for a restaurant chain and he will definitely say that i don't want to buy now and i want my earnest money deposit back so that he, in case he goes to NCLT and asks for his refund of the earnest money deposit or the performance security while the resolution plan has not been approved by the adjudicating authority, he may be able to, he may, he may succeed in getting the earnest money back because the scenario that he has undergone, uh, either he will forego uh, because this may be considered as something which is a natural calamity or an act of God, which is not uh, the, the, the project itself is not viable commercially. Bidders would not uh, be available under the liquidation sale or uh, under the sale under surface. All will wait for further reduction in the valuation that will happen. Uh, the customers would not be available and they might even say that we would like to have wait for more uh, discount. Now in case the bank uh, during this period, in case the bank invokes uh, IBC or surface, uh, the bank will also lose further. But I don't think bank has any other uh, option. If the valuations have uh, reduced, uh, if the valuations have decreased, the banks will have to take an action uh, under IBC or surface. Now I'm talking 
uh, all the defaults prior to 25th of March. I'm not talking the defaults post 25th of March. So the bank will also lose money. So this is the, uh, the scenario, uh, like uh, what will happen in the IBC, that's what I wanted to say. This is the future of the IBC. Uh, this uh, uh, scheme, uh, which is a three lakh crore credit guarantee scheme. Uh, at this particular level, I would say that this scheme is a good scheme and all my professional colleagues should try to uh, promote this scheme amongst the uh, amongst their clients. Uh, this is although this name of the scheme is MSME, but since the MSME definition has been increased, it is also written that the scheme is open to open scheme is open not only to those who are registered as MSME, but any business enterprise that meets the conditions prescribed. We will see what are the conditions prescribed. So the scheme is called like emergency credit line guarantee scheme. Uh, I'll just take uh, uh, one minute. Uh, Okay, so this scheme is uh, uh, called emergency credit line guarantee scheme and the, the, the present government uh, would actually provide guarantee uh, to this scheme through the National Credit Guarantee Trust Corporation and uh, the, uh, the loans can be given uh, to every uh, person who is eligible and the tenure of the loan would be for four years. The interest rate is capped at 9.25% if it is from bank if it is from an nbfc then the interest is interest rate is capped at 14 percent uh, the uh, there is no repayment required for one year and there is a one year moratorium which is being given and as i said this is 100 percent uh, credit guarantee cover to banks the banks will not lose money in case the bank give this amount to any of the borrower and in case the borrower defaults the banks would not lose money because this is 100% granted by government. There is another 90,000 crore liquidity injection which is given to the distribution companies under power sector. Uh, this 20,000 crore subordinate debt for stressed MSME is also given. And uh, the employee provident fund support has also been given, which is approximately 2,500. Definition, of course, has been in, uh, increased for MSME. 20% uh, uh, is the entitlement, 20% uh, of the loan outstanding as on 29th of February, 2020. That would be given to every person. Uh, this is a kind of pre-approved sanction limit, pre-approved sanction limit. So there is no application required and there is no uh, security cover and everything probably would not be required because this is actually being given in the form of working capital term loan. So working capital term loan can be given and uh, it is not specified whether the uh, security cover would be required or not. I don't think security cover would be required because this is pre-approved sanction of 20%. So uh, the eligibility is uh, every person who is MSME or otherwise, the only eligibility criteria is that uh, the outstanding loans across different banks, NBFCs and financial institutions that should be only up to 25 crores so in case the loans are more than 25 crores then the then the person would not be eligible and that is as on 29th of february 2020 the annual turnover of the firm should be up to Um... 
Anil sir, your voice is lost again. So Anil every... sir, yes please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So am I audible? Yeah, or, yeah. or we missed part. So is there any question? We can take a break or we can take some questions at this stage. That would be because we need to understand what exactly the audience is interested into. Yeah, if there were many question has come. Yeah, there was one question. Uh, one minute. I don't think even me to share the screen. Default that is even SMA one before twenty four zero three will qualify for CIRP. This is our question by CA Delhi sir. डिफॉल्ट if there is a term loan installment which was supposed to be given on 7th of uh, uh, 7th of february and it was not given till uh, 25 till 25th of march it would be considered as a default and that default will make that particular company eligible for ibc so that's very clear it is applicable to sma 0 sma 01 sma 02 and npa every every kind of default yeah revathi ma'am one more question has come at uh, 714 can i just check nitish yeah yeah i am just checking this is the it's supposed to be mail yeah. mail karna hoga see the signature that not even required mail kar do acha nikol ka to scan karke bhejna kam se kam ki wo bhi jo bhejna hai this all has to be scanned and then mail That is तो वो तो कंसेंट है ना कोर्ट में जाना है ना तो ये तो अब मेल भी भेज दो ये भी अटैच कर दो सर देर इज वन मोर क्वेश्चन ऑन इन्फॉर्मेशन यूटिलिटी रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज से समथिंग अबाउट द रोल एंड इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन यूटिलिटी एंड and its importance as i understand it a certificate from iu is now essential to start a cirp by nitish grover uh see there are uh, uh, two things one is the uh, surface and the other is the ibc under surface act it has been made mandatory that all the bank in case they have any security interest that security interest would be registered with sirsi central registry which is called sirsi uh, c e r uh, s a i so that is that registration is a must and in case the security interest is not registered with sirsi the sirsi action cannot be started now as far as the information utility is concerned information utility so far it has not become mandatory for filing an ibc application information utility uh, although they are trying to uh, do that but maybe in a few uh, months it might even become but for information utility it is uh, uh, at least we see most of the banks have already most of the banks have already registered all their security interest to information utility and they are now submitting their certificate of information utility and uh, this is the Uh, i think very recently uh, there was a notification that the information utility certificate should be submitted along with it uh, still i am sure like in case this uh, information utility certificate is not there then the application would still be accepted it is not become mandatory that the application would not be accepted at all so what are the other questions uh yeah sir one is about the new msme definition turnover criteria the minister had announced that the turnover shall not include export turnover for 250 crore limit but the notification is silent about export turnover this is by chartered accountant sundar hegde they have not included yes, uh, the, the definition is uh, uh, now very clear because the notification has never given any credit to export turnover any turnover including export turnover they have increased it to 250 while earlier they were discussing 100 crores so 
in, in this scenario, I think uh, the export turnover is inclusive in 250 crores now. Because yeah. earlier when this was being discussed, it was 100 crores. Yes. Uh, there's one more question on MSME. Whether units registered under MSME after the announcement of benefits by the government are eligible to avail the benefits? Uh, yes, I think uh, the once the limits are increased, I don't think it is applicable to new units. It is applicable to the existing units also. Uh, once once we say that it is applicable to the existing units, because had it been applicable to a new unit only, then it would have been notified in the uh, notification, which is not there. So it is applicable to the existing units also. So for any existing unit where the investment in plant and machinery is 50 crores and turnover is 250 crores or less, they can actually get themselves registered as MSME and can take the benefits of MSME. So this is applicable to the existing units also. Yeah. So we'll take it uh, later, sir, the questions. If you have completed this answer, you can proceed. We'll take the questions later. In some time. OK, so as far as this, uh, 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 this part is concerned, uh, the eligibility is, uh, as I said, 25 crores. Uh, the annual turnover uh, of 250 crores. This scheme is applicable to proprietorship concerns, partnership firm, registered company, trusts, limited liability partnerships, and even the corporates. But the loans taken for the business is being covered. But only the loans taken for the business is being covered. So the loans taken uh, by the promoters or directors in their personal capacity is not covered under this scheme. So the only loans taken for the business should be uh, 25 crores. Uh, the scheme is valid for an existing customer of a bank or NBFC or financial institution. The loan account should be less than or equal to 60 days past dues. That means that it is the borrower has not classified SMA1, SMA2 or NPA. So it is only possible that the, uh, because see the, it was considered that the default should be related to COVID-19. In case we consider 25th of March 2020 and 60 days. So by now the default, it, it must be a new default. It should not be an old default because the old defaults are covered under IBC. They can still have the, the banks will go for uh, insolvency because those are older defaults. Now, in case the government would have relaxed this further, then all the older defaults would have taken this benefit and would have taken some credit facilities, which probably would not be usable by them and they would simply eat away. The, uh, the borrower, the, there is another condition that the borrower must also be registered under GST unless the business is not required or exempted from GST. So, uh, like at this point of time, uh, so uh, let us understand the, uh, again, like the future of uh, IBC. So we are discussing the, uh, one is the financial stress. So we have discussed the financial stress. Let us retrade the financial financial stress, which is basically because of the pandemic. First, it should be handled by settlement, by settlement with the landlord, employees, suppliers, workmen, and all other wherever we are incurring expenditure. So we should cut down our losses, and we should try to uh, spread our uh, loss to the stakeholders. Why the stakeholders would agree? Because they also need continuation of relationship and they also know what are the legal remedies available because their legal remedies has also been cut, cut by the government. So try to understand how the government is managing. The government is managing that the automatically the economy will start working or not only one person will suffer, everyone will suffer. The employee will accept lesser salary because they would also not have any option. The landlord will also accept lesser rent because they will not have any option. The creditors, the suppliers will also wait for the payment because they will also have no option. Uh, Anil sir, Anil sir, we lost your audio again for a few seconds. Anil sir, uh, sir, 
delayed payment of TDS. You can use the delayed payment of provident fund. You can also use the delayed payment of income tax of with the lesser interest rate. So that whatever you do, unless it is a settlement with the uh, payee, the interest is applicable because there is nothing like blanket. The interest is applicable. So when we say, first of all, financial stress, however, we are managing the financial stress in this manner. So the government has not left any options available. So everyone would be ready for settlement. The business would continue. The companies who are doing a larger businesses, they will also settle. I, I know one of my clients is supplying to a very large uh, automobile company. And that automobile company has already declared that we will only make payment to you only to the extent of 25% and balance we will pay later. So that means that the, everyone is managing their stress just by passing on to a downward. And it will finally go to even the workman and finally it will go to the employee also. So this is, this is the real scenario, uh, what should happen in a, a pandemic situation. It is not, nobody says that, yes, the employee, while the employee is not coming to the office, is not able to come to the office, he's not spending money on the conveyance, he's not spending money on the social needs, he's not spending money on the uh, on, on getting ready and spending on his social profile. And he should continuously get the full salary, whereas the employer would suffer. So after this COVID or maybe three months or six months, then he will come out from home and he will try to join the office the, the office would also already be completely dead. So where he will start the job, where he will join, where he will get the salary after six months, everyone is worried about this part. So there is no society or economy which will say that the, all the employers should be financially dead and all the employees should be flourishing. That's not a scenario that is acceptable. So very clearly, this is the way that we have to manage our financial stress. I think uh, the concept of managing financial stress is actually managed. Like uh, you might have seen why the stock market is increasing. It has gone down to say 27,000. It has gone, it has come up to 34,000. So while this market realized that the losses to companies would not be huge because there are many companies, they actually have reduced their salary bills. There are many companies, they have decided to allow their work from home. See, like if you allow employees to work from home, you also save a lot. One, that the employee would be ready to work at a lower salary. Two, that you don't need office facilities, you don't need office expenses, a lot of electricity expenses, a lot of support staff which is required for getting the work done. That also would not be required. So the practically, the businesses would not suffer huge losses because they will also cut their expenditure to that extent. So this is the way I hope I'm able to conclude this part that how to how to manage financial stress, which is because of pandemic. I am not talking about the financial stress which was very which was existing prior to 25th March because on those particular defaults, IBC is applicable, surface is applicable. So uh, the 20% amount can be taken. Uh, interest is also 9.25% and 14%. So the application is also very, very simple. I'm not spending time on this. I'm only spending time on the concept. IBC uh, is definitely surviving. There is no decline in the IBC um, uh, applications. There would not be any decline in the cases which is to come. And there is no decline in the, uh, the only thing that which actually have more impact on the IBC is the threshold limit, which has been increased from one lakh to one crore. That will give more impact to the professionals because see the, that the once it was being used for recovery process and it was clogging the uh, capacity of NCLT benches, that is what is the objective by increasing the one lakh to one crore. The scenario, uh, the applications and the impact, of course, the stimulus, which whatever stimulus are being given by the government, it will have impact of revival. It will have impact of even uh, cooling down the uh, uh, the entrepreneur. Uh, so that's what exactly the my presentation says. We have uh, a lot of uh, uh, time to discuss. I will just uh, 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 withdraw my uh, this slide and we can have discussion. Uh, so we can have discussion on uh, uh, the, yes. 
so uh, like uh, let us try to understand if there is any other question or we can even uh, open uh, uh, some of the people who are trying to ask the question i would yeah, like to understand are... yeah please sir please see, i see i see i can you, you can even give uh, the uh, access to couple of people who want to ask some questions and that would be a really uh, wonderful but then i would only request everyone to be uh, very very specific to questions and i would also be very very specific to answers yeah we will take the ones which are coming writing and then we will uh, yes yeah there are yeah. some more questions have come in we will take those questions yeah uh, selma can you give me the uh, right yeah you can we'll have to zoom it ma'am very very small i can read that even you can read that can you see it now yeah i can yeah. read that yeah and it is required a point to yeah. valuers there are however three classes for land and building plant and machinery and uh, financial assets how would an ip decide which class of uh, asset valuers to appoint especially as the ip cannot appoint a third valuer unless there is a significant uh, difference between the two valuations this is my ce nitish grower i think uh, uh, nitish uh, uh i i couldn't understand how would an ip decide which class of asset valuer to appoint uh, okay so see as i said that the valuer is to be appointed uh after uh, see within 7 days of rp's appointment or 47th day whichever is earlier so now let us understand that the 47 days are available with an rp to understand the company rp will understand uh, what is uh, included in the assets of the company that if the company has land and building then definitely the land and building valuers would be appointed if the company has uh, plant and machinery then the valuers would be appointed for plant and machinery also in case the company has some uh, financial assets and securities then these two valuers also would be appointed so the basic information that the rp will get in the first 40 days is the what are the assets of the company based on the information that he collect from the creditors or based on the information that he collect from the company by making visits so then only he will decide in case in any company if there are, if the company has all the three assets then he will appoint two assets for each asset class if any company has only two kinds of asset and the third class third class of asset is not available then he will appoint two valuers for each of the two class of asset so the rp will decide based on his on, on his study of the assets of the company yeah sir i have a, a small query for you on this see how do we appoint which value valuer would be asked to value the inventory because normally if you see stock audits are given to auditors but when we go in as a an ip who should we appoint to value the inventory because in some cases the inventory value is also very high and also scrap whom can we appoint see like uh, uh, the uh, as far as the inventory is concerned uh, whenever the inventory is technical now think of a situation that the inventory is uh, having some components some machinery some uh, uh, mechanical items See, if the a chartered accountant would not understand the uh, position, the status, the condition, the sellability of the components. The chartered accountant can only see the costing from the books of account, and then the uh, even in some cases the present market value of the conditions is acceptable. So my understanding about this is that the as far as the uh, if the components are like this, where the condition has to be assessed when valuation has to be done then it is a collective effort of uh, a valuer who actually is having specialization in plant and machinery and the valuer who has the sir we are losing your voice so we are losing your voice yeah we lost your audio 
are not always, we are not doing anything. Whenever it yeah. it is gone, it comes back automatically. So it yes, is coming sir. automatically back. Could you okay, repeat so the last sentence? I will sentence. repeat. Uh, I will yeah. repeat that uh, question. It depends upon uh, the item of inventory. If the inventory is uh, having some mechanical assets, some electrical assets, where the condition of the asset is not known to the valuer. In case we appoint a chartered accountant who is the valuer for uh, financial assets, he would not be able to understand the condition. He would only understand the orders in hand. He will only understand the costing, and he will also understand the uh, uh, the like the condition he will not be able to assess. So for that matter, uh, we actually have to appoint a valuer who is an expert in plant and machinery and a valuer who is an expert in uh, financial asset. So they collectively have to value a stock if the items are not accessible by the financial asset valuer. Now in case the uh, stock is uh, a common item which can be understandable, which can be assessed by a common person, then of course the financial, uh, the valuer for financial assets is an appropriate person because he would be able to understand the costing, he would be understand, he would be under, able to understand the value addition, and then he will value it. But then of course the uh, valuer for plant and machinery would not be uh, required. Now in case it's a jewelry, then. Uh, in the in the case of jewelry, we understand that the uh, government of India so far has introduced only three class of assets. One is land and building, plant and machinery, and the securities and financial assets. Jewelry valuers has not been uh, introduced. However, we have with the valuers for jewelry who are registered under the uh, income tax under the wealth tax act. So we should take those valuers and we should get the valuation done for jewelry from those valuers. So in case the items are uh, something like uh, uh, the food grains, where the RP would not be able to understand what is the grade and what is the condition, so then the RP can use any expert who is uh, who is considered to be an expert in classification of the food grain for the purpose of valuation of inventory. An outside professional expert can be appointed for valuation of inventory only for the condition. However, for the valuation, for verification of books of account, for verification of cost, for verification of value addition. It is only the securities and financial asset class of assets. He would be appointed. Yeah, thank you, sir. Well, so the next question is, there is no loan taken from any bank at present for an MSME, whether they can avail emergency credit line. If so, what shall be the limit? By no, easy... there is no power there. Uh, there is no uh, uh, eligibility. The only eligibility is with the, those people who have taken a loan from any bank, uh, NBFC or financial institution. And to the extent of 20% of their existing working capital facility is given to them, that is given to them as term loan repayable in four years with one year moratorium. Anyone who doesn't have any facility from bank or financial institution or NBFC is not eligible to take loan from this emergency credit line. Yeah, there's one more. I have a small announcement to all the viewers. The materials have not been put under the handouts. We will be sending email to them after we collect it from the speaker. So just a small piece of information. Many are asking where is the PPT and the email. We'll be sending email to you. Also, it'll be put in the CRC website. Yeah, MP ma'am, please. Yeah. Um, whether the moratorium for repayment of installments is applicable for general real estate agreements or limited only to banks? By C. M. Murli Prasad. Murli Krishna Prasad. Uh, no, I think we need to uh, understand this question again. The moratorium. I think we need to understand this question from the person. What exactly you understood about the question? The I think question he's asking is, about the EMI moratorium, which is uh, which was announced. No, the three months uh, EMI moratorium. Okay, so I think this is uh, regarding the home buyers. So yes. every home buyer, uh, every home buyer is getting the moratorium, and for three months or six months. And that is the moratorium for the repayment of the installments to the bank. 
so that the account would not be classified as NPA. However, the interest would continue. And uh, I think in some cases, the, uh, the interest also is getting uh, funded. In the case of this uh, emergency credit line, the interest during COVID period is also getting funded and it will come back to the company as an FITL. If the, somebody is not able to pay the interest also, it will come back to the company as FITL. So that is also the within the emergency line of uh, credit, that facility is also available. However, in the case of home buyers, the moratorium is for installments and uh, that would uh, be paid later. And then the banks will reschedule uh, the account so that during this six months or three months, the loan repayments are not liable to be made. I think that was the question. Yeah, there's one more question which has come in. A valuation is required for life. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you, but. Uh, yeah, your video is freezed. You are there? Your video is freezed now. Yeah, Revdi Mam's video is freezed. Yeah. Actually. A IBC pro, irrespective of the asset, it deals with payables also. You see, we lost your voice in between, so we need to read. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, please repeat the question. Yeah. Uh, whether in the IBC process we need to value the liabilities also as uh, by an SFA value. So the liabilities Securities are not supposed value. to be valued. The liabilities are not supposed to be valued. It is only and only the assets. Liabilities are not supposed to be valued. And the valuation, the liquidation value is only the uh, value of the assets. And liabilities are supposed to be handled out of the assets. And no liability is to be valued. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we see I like the... <clears throat> Yeah. No, sir, please go ahead. So uh, for, for a chartered accountant, uh, like whenever somebody comes to you and say that we have incurred losses and we are under financial stress, I think the best thing to advise them is the how to handle this financial stress. As I'm trying to say that this financial stress has to be passed down. It has to be passed and spread to everyone and it is accepted by the society by now. In the initial one month, it was not acceptable, but now everyone has accepted that this natural calamity will give loss to everyone. Nobody would actually, uh, uh, nobody would uh, come out of uh, this uh, pandemic without incurring a loss. Maybe an employee, yes, definitely will suffer a loss. So the management of financial stress during this period is very, very important that we should try we should start with settlement with all the liabilities then uh, why i'm saying so i repeat the landlord doesn't have any option legal option employee and employer doesn't have any legal option the periodic payment wherever we make they don't have any legal option banks don't have any legal option for the covid uh, defaults covid related defaults the NBFCs have got no options. Uh, the unsecured loans, they have no options. So everyone will settle with the businessman so that the business continues and the losses are spread to all the stakeholders. So this is the conclusion of today's uh, uh, webinar. IBC, I have explained that IBC is not suspended. Financial stress, how to manage financial stress is very, very important. So, I think the objective of the webinar is met. The future course of action for handling uh, stressed asset is also met. How can we? Uh, future of the IBC is also met. Future of the IBC is uh, very, very uh, uh, good. It is uh, not at all diminished in any manner. So, similarly, the businesses also will grow. <clears throat> the demand will be lower for some. I think we lost your audio. I think it comes back after a few seconds.
Yes, it will come back. Yeah. I think it will come back now. Yeah, it has yes. come back, sir. Yes. So you see, uh, uh, the lot of apprehensions that we can see in the minds of professionals and businessmen, and those apprehensions has to be corrected. So first, we are we corrected the apprehensions regarding the IBC suspension, completely incorrect. IBC has not been suspended, and the business in the IBC profession would continue. Only thing which is suspended is post 25th of March. Second thing that we uh, attended today is that the entrepreneurs, the businessmen, how the businessman can handle and what is the way forward for businessmen, for professionals. So this is the way forward that they should continue with the business and they should realign their business with the expected demand now. The demand will be reduced for one year and more even for two years or, or in some of the industries because the corona is not going to leave us. Corona will continue for a longer period. The social needs of a person would actually come down hugely. Uh, the people have to uh, realign their businesses to the expected uh, 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 to the expected demand. Maybe that the any anyone who was uh, engaged in uh, uh, Indian wedding industry, uh, they they would def definitely suffer a lot. Hotels would suffer a lot. Banquet halls would suffer a lot. And all this would suffer because they actually have to realign. They have to re start using their assets somewhere else. So this is the this is my uh, understanding of uh, way forward. So there is nothing which can uh, create demand suddenly because the corona is not going to go suddenly because today also we have a risk of uh, catching on to corona. Even in sitting in the office, we might even uh, catch on to corona and that's where I'm not allowing, I'm not keeping people. I'm a person that I'm not allowing anyone to touch my bottle, touch my glass, touch my car. I'm not allowing them. Everything else was this, this, all this was being done by people earlier. So definitely there is a reduction in the demand of human resources. So everyone should settle this in their mind. If there is a, in, the, in case there is a lesser demand, they should readjust it to their salaries. They should accept lesser salaries. So if somebody is not ready to that, will suffer more because the demand is not going to be revived to the earlier uh, level. That's very, very clear. So I think uh, uh, Mr. Jan can also add from his experience. Uh, is there any other apprehension about uh, the way forward, the IBC, the financial stress? Yeah, no, no, Anil, sir, you got it right, actually. Uh, things things are not going to be the same way the way they were earlier. It's going to take a lot of time and people will have to kind of accept. In fact, uh, you can see a lot of things already happening. The immediate thing was Indigo cutting down on salaries and people have accepted yeah. because you might not even get what you are being getting actually. So even as a discussion about the chartered opponents getting that piece, maybe for the post COVID you can still realize a little delay, but for things going forward, the client is going to come back and say, boss, I didn't have three months business to kind of manage it out. Help us out. Not only three months, the client will say that uh, you reduce the fee because I have I have reduced my turnover. Similarly, exactly. the chartered accountant, chartered accountant will have to work downward. Chartered accountant will, will also have to request their entire infrastructure to resize it according to the expected demand in, in the future. Resizing of a shopkeeper, resizing of a hotel, resizing of a businessman. Look, there is no international traffic, international travel. Even the domestic travel is not there. So there are many businesses which actually have to realign themselves. And it, it is not really important that uh, everyone should say that I am not able to pay, so everyone should go and file a section and 10 application and uh, finally find uh, that yes because of the covid i whatever i had i uh, diverted somewhere and filed a section 10 application and uh, i am enjoying now after two years i will start another business so that is the reason the section 10 application was also included that no even not even section 10 application will be filed so try to understand like if a person uh, was engaged in 
if a person was engaged in a business of uh, international travel he knows that the international travel business is gone for two years so the one simple scenario for him is that he should file an application under section 10 and get a fresh start for himself and that is also prohibited because otherwise everyone will file section 10 application so that no liabilities are supposed to be paid that is also prohibited so everyone has to resize the businesses readjust the businesses realign the businesses so i think this is the uh, this is what we are trying to conclude Director, any other questions to be taken up? Yeah, there's one more question, sir, um, about Section 247 of the Companies Act. Uh, why does Section 247 of Companies Act speak of valuations of liabilities? Where is it required? Again, by C.A. Nitish Grover. So he's come back to that valuation of liabilities under Section 247 of the Companies Act. So this section 247 uh, presently deals with the uh, I think this is what he's referring to is the uh, where the RBI has got the power otherwise this section 247 of the companies act in case Nitish can explain to me a little bit but I believe is section 247 is the uh, where the NBFCs are uh, supposed to be taken to I think section 247 of the companies I know that's 277 so what is exactly 247 of the Companies Act? Because I think you have to just give me a little bit of a tip on this. What is Section 247 of the Companies Act? Thank you, sir. It provides that where a valuation is required to be made in respect of any property, stock, shares, debentures, securities, or goodwill or any other asset or net worth of a company or its liabilities under the provisions of this act it shall be valued by person so whenever it comes to net worth if we are valuing net worth uh, the net worth is the uh, asset minus liabilities so when we are valuing net worth of a company then the valuation of liabilities has to be done see under the uh, under the insolvency law uh, there is no valuation required for liabilities but in case somebody is trying to get a valuation of a tangible net worth or a net worth of a company then everything would be uh, required assets minus liabilities net worth. so the definition is the valuation of uh, net worth then only the liabilities are required so when we value the assets then no no liabilities are required so basically section 247 is valuation by registered valuers just coming to it from 1810-2017. Right, it is. Like this is a, a very clear that in case the net worth has to be valued, then liabilities are required, otherwise not. But now, of course, there is a new uh, valuers bill uh, has also yes. been introduced. The valuers bill is actually presently under discussion and there will be an institution uh, like IBBI and that would be regulating the valuer profession. So I would advise everyone to uh, reach out to this profession this profession as we have seen a valuer that was a very very uh, 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 like uh, 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 not a good profession it was considered because it was not regulated the fee, fee level was also very low but now the uh, the new profession the new qualified regulatory valuers they would have better uh, respect and they would have better systems to value a particular transaction that uh, is a good profession and that can be continued along with the chartered accountancy practice that's a good profession ibc also is a good profession everyone should try to reach out to this profession and if not uh, as an rp or a liquidator then of course as a, uh, as a person who can uh, even for even like see let us understand once this once this uh, We lost search audio again. There's audio again. They can flash that message again. Oh, but he has since yeah. we since it. It takes, I think, some 30 seconds for it to come again.
Yes, it has come back. Yeah, it's come back. Yeah, it's come back. Now, yes, now, it has, now it has come back. So yeah. uh, the valuation is a good profession, and the IBC is a good profession, even if it is for uh, the uh, not for RP or uh, the liquidator, but it can be handling these stressed assets. With the while while we are auditing the company, we should uh, we should know the insolvency law. And once it is implemented for proprietorship concerns, partnership firms, and individuals, then it will become a drawing room subject. And then nobody can, no audit can be completed without the knowledge of insolvency. It is very, very important that all the professionals must know the uh, insolvency law. I'm not saying that everyone should become RP, but the knowledge of insolvency law is very, very important. And while doing auditing, it has to be used. As it, once this uh, individual insolvency, part, proprietorship, partnership, that would be a very, very great uh, opportunity for everyone. Very great opportunity for everyone. That should be, again, uh, but then that will take time uh, because the infrastructure in, uh, in India is for starting the individual. The, the personal grantors insolvency was only started because the government was getting criticism that although we are taking the companies to insolvency and but the promoters are still enjoying a king size life. What are we able to do against the promoters? Then this particular law was uh, notified hurriedly and uh, the so that the criticism is completely taken off. And now the government can definitely stay, say that we have taken away the company also and we have made the promoter as a bankrupt. So what, what else can be done? And in case there is any fraudulent transaction, then the prosecution is also being done. And that prosecution is also being done by IBBI. You know, there is a section 236 under IBC that all the prosecutions will be handled by IBBI and IBBI will become prosecutor in this case, not the RP. That scenario is also well taken care of. I think with this we can conclude our talk of today and if there is no other question we can conclude. So I would yeah, uh, certainly you. say thank you very much to the entire yeah. South Indian you, you would like to add something Africa. to conclude and then I'll request Abhishek to give me the whole of thanks. Yeah, I think uh, sir has done a wonderful job as uh, usual in uh, you know presenting IBC and uh, going forward what are the things which are going to be faced by us and how IBC has not been suspended. It is only certain defaults uh, which are going to occur during the COVID period which is going to be suspended and as usual elaborated on the opportunities for chartered accountants and uh, valuers which are both you know IBC and valuation are both the sunrise sectors currently for chartered accountants. We should not allow this suspension period of that certain defaults to, you know, put us off not acquiring knowledge for these uh, in these two areas. Let us use this period to upgrade ourselves, upskill ourselves and get the knowledge so that once the lockdown is lifted and the suspension is also lifted, we are going to be flooded with work. Thank you so much, sir. I think I'll uh, leave it to Abhishek to give you the formal word of thanks. Yeah, we please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, CA Anil Goyalji, for a very wonderful address and uh, clarifying a lot of things. I think uh, many of us came into this meeting shrouded in mystery on many aspects of the IBC and its applicability, including myself. And uh, I think you managed to lift the veil uh, all, all over that cloud and you've given us so much clarity, like a sun shining through the clouds. That's how it felt today. So thank you so much, Anil Goyalji, for the really wonderful uh, presentation and also sharing your inputs on uh, where you think it will be going forward and how we should act as a profession. I also like to thank uh, CA Revati for joining us in this meeting and giving us an opening and closing address. And uh, a special thanks to our chairman, uh, CA Dungachan Jain. The reason is uh, uh, we have been in back-to-back -back meetings uh, over the last three days. Last night, our meeting went up to uh, midnight at 12 o'clock. And in fact, uh, just before this meeting, I think, uh, one minute before we were in another meeting, immediately we closed that room and joined here. And he doesn't have power in his house. He has gone. He's sitting out of somebody else's office and he has joined us. So I deserve a special thanks for uh, Dungach and Jane. Uh, we have been seeing each other's face for the last 72 hours more than our wives. So uh, despite that, he has uh, 
been tireless. He looks like he's so fresh and he's just entered. But uh, thank you, Chairman, for the wonderful efforts for joining us today. And uh, thank you for all the audience for joining us and asking wonderful questions also to the speaker. Uh, stay home, stay safe. I'd like to also quickly share our future programs and request everyone to join. Because uh, tomorrow, 10th, 11th, and 12th, three days, we have a workshop, a refresher course on technological changes and uh, advancements if impacting income tax, GST, and audits. Tomorrow session on income tax, day after on GST, and third session uh, on 12th on impact on audits. We have three reputed speakers speaking on this matter and very important, especially given the COVID period. And then on the 13th of June, from 4 to 7 p.m. on Saturday, that is on Saturday, we have a program on standards of auditing, planning and audit. We have CA Bhavani Balasubramaniam, very, very reputed partner of a, a huge uh, CA firm will be joining us on that day and she'll be addressing on this. Many of you may be aware, auditing and assurance standards is a mandatory CP requirement now. So irrespective of who we are, we have to complete uh, these uh, mandatory CPRs. So we are planning programs every Saturday for the next three Saturdays at the same time, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So we request you all to please register for the same. On 15th of June at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., we have an excellent program called Income Tax Settlement Commission Procedure and Practice. It's a very, very emerging area. Uh, the Settlement prior settlement Commission is hugely remunerative as well. So it's a program where we've got the Vice Chairman of the Settlement Commission, uh, Advocate Hukum Chand Jain IRS from Bombay, who's joining us. This is a free program and request you to please register before the registrations get filled out. This is on 15th of June, that is Monday at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We will, of course, announce the future programs. We have planned many more, and we will be announcing them uh, as these programs conclude. So request all of you to join for our future programs. Thank you all. Stay home, stay safe. Yeah, so I would you, like sir. to say one yes. word, sir, a few sir. words. Like I would say uh, that uh, the uh, SI, uh, SIRC certainly is doing a wonderful job as I mean, take around so many and I have also heard before that you are trying to engage all your members, all professional brothers into activities during this lockdown period. And it is a huge uh, work that you are doing uh, and my heartiest thanks to uh, uh, the chairman, uh, Mr. DC Jain, uh, Abhishek and special thanks to Revati. Uh, she's been interacting with me. And most important is that nothing could have happened without participants. And I still see there are more than 200 participants that are connected with us and right through the, and even presently also there are, we have about 258 participants connected to ours and that actually gives us a pleasure. I would certainly say that I'm doing this only for my learning because this is my way of learning as I always say. And there is no other objective. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank